Catalonia is, uh, as defined uh, by Wikipedia, uh, region in the northeastern part of the Iberian Peninsula, across the Pyrenees. The uh, French Catalonia is happy uh, with his condition uh, of being French, and Spanish Catalonia is not happy and wants secession, wants to be an independent state, and wants his flag to be around those buildings as a new state in Europe. Uh, the population of the Spanish Catalonia is uh, 7,500,000 people, uh, f between 40, 42 percent are native, from native origins and assimilated, like me, and uh, between 50 and 56 percent, uh, they come from the rest of Spain or from foreign countries. Uh, the languages there, uh, according to the last survey, systematic survey, uh, Spanish is dominant. 56 percent of the people use uh, Spanish as the habitual language. Uh, 36 Catalan. But if you add the 6% who uh, say that they use habitually both, you have 42. So uh, you can see that the, the two scores are repeated. Uh, the majority of native uh, people and assimilated speak habitually a Catalan, like me, uh, and uh, uh, between 50 and 56% of the population speaks uh, Spanish. There are other languages, of course, uh, Arabic, uh, Amazi, Kurdu, Romanian, Italian, English, Chinese, French. So the presentation is finished. Uh, Catalans from mid uh, 2012 uh, presented an enormous increase of their desire for independence. Uh, you can see here that, that between June and October of uh, 2012, the proportion of people who would prefer uh, Catalonia as an independent state uh, climate from 30% to almost 50%. And this is a tremendous wave, a tremendous change, that it hasn't been explained. Those are good data, serious data. It's a survey, but it's a well-done survey. Three times a year, uh, done by the official survey agency of the Catalonian regional government. And uh, uh, as, as you can see, this has decreased a little bit, but has stabilized at 40%. And the question is, why did it happen? What happened to explain that tremendous change. You have the, here this, exactly the same graphic with all the points. The last one is from uh, March 2016, last month. And you can see that the wave is the one that I described it in the other one, in the previous. But uh, this stabilization continues around 40% of people surveyed. So what do we have? We have a wave which had an abrupt surge, which was punctuated by gigantic street demonstrations that was strengthened by the backing and impulse of the regional government, and it has consolidated around 40% of the electorate. Those are examples of the gigantic, in fact, Guinness World Records of demonstrations, of street demonstrations. 
in this instance, for instance, in, in this picture, for instance, you can see a demonstration formed by more than one million people wearing shirts to form the Catalan flag around nine kilometers. Nobody had done that before in the history of humanity. So they are very proud of that. And this is a very special uh, uh, collective behavior. Oh, I need water. I forgot the water. No, no, I have, I have a lot. Okay. okay. Catalans demanded a, a referendum to vote for secession, and they had that. They celebrated the, the, the referendum on the 9th of November of uh, 2014, it was a paralegal referendum because the Spanish constitution, the Spanish current democratic constitution, which was voted, by the way, uh, by the Catalans, uh, it, it was the region of Spain that voted more in favor of the Spanish constitution, just to remind uh, another data. Uh, but uh, they demanded a referendum, the Spanish constitution that doesn't allow a secession referendum, but the regional government organized the referendum, and the referendum was celebrated because the Spanish central government allowed it. It didn't interrupt the process. And 1,900,000 people uh, voted in favor of secession. We, this was uh, 81 percent of participants, which were 2,300,000 people who voted in a very orderly, pacific and uh, splendid way. And this represented 38 percent of the electorate. The rest of the electorate of the region didn't go to the, uh, to the station ballots. They didn't attend the call. And it was the void of any consequence. But this is not a survey. This is voting behavior, which is another thing. And the last elections, in these elections, September 2015, last year, six months ago, in this case, yes, the rest of the electorate of the region appeared. They went to the uh, 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 ballot stations, and the total of voters were 4,100,000 people, 75% of the total census. The abstentionists were 1,400,000 people. And the results, at the end, you have uh, votes for secessionist parties, 1,000,000 900,000, uh, 950,000, which is, by the way, very close to this figure here. Very close. And against, so votes for non secessionist parties, 2,100,000 people. In Percentages of participants in the election, 40, rounding up, 48% for secession, 52% against secession. And the difference is 150,000 votes. Only that. That's the situation. So we have a very polarized society now. Which, was, which has appeared in five years. It wasn't so polarized, but now it's completely polarized. And the good citizens, in brackets, or 48%, and the bad citizens, in brackets, uh, again, is 52%. Those who, who are in favor of self-determination are the Democrats. 
They, they call themselves the Democrats. And, uh, and those who are against self-determination, because they maintain that the rules don't permit that, or anti-democrats. And those who are in favor of secessions or patriots. And the names of those patriots are sovereignistas, secessionistas, independentistas. And those who are against secessions are traitors, anti-Catalans. And they are called unionist, fascist, and in Catalan, botiflers, which is the name for the traitor in Catalan. And why did it happen? And why in Catalonia? And not, this is compulsory, always, if you want to approach to a phenomenon in, in, with the intention to understand something. Why did it happen in this place and, and not in other places who have characteristics similar to Catalonia? For instance, in Wales, in Brittany, in Tyrol, in Corsica, in Bavaria, in Padania, in Galicia, in the Canary Islands, in the Balearic Islands. Why in Catalonia? Nobody knows. Although economies who have uh, worked mm, mm, with models in order to predict conflict when there are ethnocultural barriers, they have demonstrated that when two main factors, one is polarization and another is fractionalization, uh, combine in a country, the probabilities of a conflict is highest. And the models say that the country in Europe that has the highest probability now, this is models, a mathematical model, but the models predict that the country in Europe who has the highest probability of a civil conflict is, is Spain, now, in the whole of Europe. Well, uh, there, there have been dozens, hundreds, uh, thousands of proposals in order to explain that. Uh, and uh, here I've summarized some of them. Hmm? The growing of emotional distrust and contempt between, between Catalans and Spaniards. The economical, the uh, tendency of the Spanish government to apply uh, taxes which are excessive, in fact, parasitarian. The hunger uh, of power and status of local politicians. Uh, the emulation of Barça's success. Because Barça has uh, created a team which, is, which leads the world. And now it could be that in some minds, um, if we have succeeded in that uh, particular uh, mm, uh, sorry? Yeah, exactly. The, uh, the, the dissemination of xenophobia through the social networking, the context, the Scottish and other region advanced democratic uh, voted. And if the Scots can vote, why we don't? We can't vote. It's, it's absurd. The European crisis, the indoctrination by the media, the opportunity of the Spanish deep weaknesses, but uh, they are unsatisfactory. The majority of them, they are deeply unsatisfactory because in, 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 in all those regions, except with the Barça factor, they have the other factors. 
And unless we accept the potency of the Barca factor, which I think it, 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 it has an influence, those explanations don't work. So, so uh, the Spanish intelligentsia and some Catalan intelligentsia have recurred quite commonly to the, to the hypothesis of uh, transient alienation, of uh, transient madness. Let me read for you a piece of the paper of today. No, I need the, the other glasses. Need the other glasses. It's the paper of today, El País, which is the main newspaper in Spain and the whole Spanish culture. And it's in the last page, in the last page, I read, I translate for you. Uh, it's a mystery. It's a mystery, but sometimes societies are attacked by a virus, by a virus of mystic madness. And it propagates like an epidemic. Nobody has been able to explain uh, how it happens. But it's an epidemic that infects brains, attention, eh? infects brains. I'm translating. It says infects brains, uh, chairs at the universities, intellectuals, newspapers, and nobody knows the origin. It's not devoted to Catalonia. It's devoted to another mystic magnet that now it's traveling through all the regions of Spain, which is called Podemos. And the, the man who signs this is considered the most brilliant thinker now in Spain. His name is Félix de Azúa. And this has been written by Nobel Prizes of Literature, uh, right, uh, Spanish and Latin American writers, even members of the advisory board of this association, Euromine, have recurred to this argument. It's, it's madness. It's a transient madness. It's psychopathological. It's a, it's a pathology of society. In fact, some of them have been using a very famous statement of the founder of the Spanish anthropology, Dr. Caro Baroja, who once 30 years ago, referring to the Basque country, said, no, there is no solution for the Basque country. You have to send them uh, their trains full of psychiatrists. And that will be the solution for the Basque country. Sending them trains full of psychiatrists. And some of the Spanish intellectuals have recovered that and have uh, suggested that Catalonia need trains full of psychiatrists. This is, as you can read here, nonsense. It's a pseudo, exp uh, it's a pseudo explanation to calm themselves. When you don't know how to explain the phenomenon, do you invent a possible explanation who seems magic? But it's, it's completely nonsense. So what happens? Uh, it's, 
an example of normative political psychology. Nothing to do with psychopathology. It's uh, an episode of exacerbated group competition in a place where, where there is an ethno-cultural frontier. And how it worked. So Spain had an extreme fragility, tremendous fragility, between 2008 and 2012. And this opportunity was perceived, because it was very clear, by uh, some local elites and middle classes uh, in Catalonia, in general close to the regional government, and uh, they took the opportunity to try to reach and exercise undisputed power. How? S launching a tremendous campaign of indoctrination and social pressure to put a uh, uh, mm, drive and motors and giants to the tendencies of gregariousness, which is a, a very uh, deep psychological uh, mm, tendency in humans in order to push you victory. And that's it. Nothing to do with psychopathology. But what is inside this is very complicated. It's easy to formulate, but it's, it's tremendously complicated. I have examples now. Uh, how am I doing about time? 50 minutes for me. OK. I have examples of um, social conformity, parochialism, and social pressure in the form of flak pressure. The majority of them are ex experiments, and they are selected. There are many mo more examples. So I'm, I'm going to talk from now. I have to. I have to say that this lecture, I gave that lecture two years ago at my university. My colleagues at the Institute of Neuroscience in the Autonomous of Barcelona demanded me to, uh, uh, to think about the issue and, and, and give a lecture there. Then I, I, I repeated that lecture in Madrid and then in Galicia and then in Alicante. Uh, and uh, you will see that some of the slides are uh, from that period. So I'm going to talk about uh, the, those tendencies to con congregation, obedience, conformity, and, in, in, and, and parochialism, or in-group favoritism. Uh, I'm going to skip that, because I, it's already defined. It. The, the interesting thing the last years is that those uh, forms of groupal behavior or individual tendency in relation to groupal behavior can be studied from uh, the point of view of neuroscience as well, not only. And this, of course, uh, can, be studied, it can be studied in, in, in duets, in small groups, in bands, in clans, tribes, nations, sects, religions, and uh, it, it it, it, and it applies to secular ideologies and to religious ideologies and, and, and any, any kind of uh, manifestation of that. OK, let's talk first of uh, uh, social conformity of, or obedience. It's curious that the Spanish intelligentsia uh, forgives so easily that people so relevant as Adam Smith or John Minor Keynes refer to that. And they studied that uh, with a tremendous consistency, without any need to go to the psychopathology. But the real experiments that started this field were the uh, very well known experiments of Solomon Ask. In, uh, in the United States about uh, social uh, conformity or, or obedience to the pressure of others. He um, 
um, created situation at the Laboratory of Social Psychology in which he presented, like in this situation, he presented first this line, and they had the, the, part the participants on the experiments, they had the opportunity to look at the slide, to see, uh, to, to, to see the line, and then disappeared, and then he, uh, uh, he presented uh, other lines and asked it, Remember that this one has disappeared. Ask it, which one of these is more similar to the previous one? Which one of, of those three lines is more similar to the one you saw previously? And uh, the order of answering to this question was, uh, predetermined. He was asking first this man, second this one, third this one, fourth this one, fifth this one, and this one was the real only subject. Because the others were confederates of, of the experimenter. So you have here the results. If the, uh, in, in some uh, trials, the confederates uh, answer it correctly. So they were saying two. Line two is the more similar to the standard line, to the, to the line we saw previously. But in other trials, they deliberately uh, responded, answer it, and correctly. And they were saying, this man was saying one. And this man was saying one. And this other man was saying one. And this other man was saying one. And then the real subject, which was always this, the penultimate, you can see the, here the results. When, when the pressure of the group arrives to between six and eight persons, 40% of people investigated change their, their opinion and uh, 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 they declare uh, that the, the line which is more similar to this one is one. This was repeated uh, in many different conditions. Paying, not paying, saying the opinions allow, writing down the, the results uh, have some variations, but the, the essential uh, mm, mm, finding that at least close to 50% of the people are able to change their opinion, going with the group, uh, even if they see that the opinion of the, gr of the group is wrong, but they say that they, uh, they, uh, they go with the group, this happens uh, again and again and again. Then you can think, which is the usual thing that everybody uh, starts to uh, react when, uh, when those classical experiments are explained again, it's, well, this is the typical social psychology experiment, uh, experiment that it, uh, it always happens with American students and nobody is able, is able to replicate that because everybody knows that the experiments of social psychology are very difficult to replicate. But this has been replicated in Europe many times and it happens the same. It has been replicated in China, in India, in Australia and it happens the same. Exactly the same. In fact, Solomon Ash suspected that people, not only, not all of them, but most of them, not only changed their open opinion, but they changed their, their, their perception, the way they saw the world. So, uh, Gregory Burns at the University of Georgia repeated that experiment uh, 10 years ago with a similar task. It, was, it wasn't comparing the uh, longitude uh, 
the length of lines, but comparing uh, figures, geometrical figures rotated, which is a, a little bit more difficult. The other one, it's very simple. This one is a bit, a, a, a bit more difficult. So th the question is, those figures are the same rotated or different figures? So this is the subject, and uh, the subject was inside the machine of fMRI in order to uh, obtain signals uh, while uh, the uh, subject was deciding to keep his opinion or go with the group. Hmm? And uh, first, the, uh, the, the subject saw, the, uh, the, saw the, the figures. Obviously, this is done with uh, lots of trials and many figures. But first, uh, they, they, they can see the figures, then they, they see the opinion of the group of people ha who have known uh, before the experiment, but not, 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 they are not familiar people, unknown, but they've acknowledged it at the entrance of the laboratory. And in some trials, the opinion of computers, not people, not social, opi of, of, uh, not social opinion, but a technological opinion. So, results. In this case, you have a, perf a perfect repetition, a perfect replication of ASH experiments. When the group is wrong, in half of the trial, the group was correct. But when the group was wrong, obviously wrong, 40% uh, of the subject went with the group. And when the computers were wrong, 32% of the people were with the computers and not keeping their opinion. So this is a tremendously robust phenomenon. And now replicated in a different task with different people and inside the machine. To look at what, happen at what happens in the brain. And in the brain, it succeeded that it's a complex task. In order to compare figures, rotated figures, the, 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 the brain has to activate a lot of areas. But the area, areas which uh, participate in visual discrimination, visual perception, motoric, and movement, uh, but the area that discriminates between external information computers and external information persons, specifically, is uh, this, up, I've lost it, this area here, which is posterior, up, devoted, it's uh, in the parietal lobe, devoted to complex visual perception. So Solomon asked was right. People not only change opinion, that, but they change the way they see the world. In this case, figures. Because this is the, uh, the job of this area. And when people kept their opinions, so they didn't go with the group, the areas that were activated are areas of affective uh, implication, the amygdalas and some parts of the estriate. So people who keep their independence against the wrong tendency of, an, of, uh, of a group have to uh, um, mm, uh, there is a cost. There is a, an effective and emotional cost automatic. But I accept perfectly that um, you can be skeptical. Still, because, well, lines, comparing the length of lines, 
or comparing the, the geometric characteristics of figures. This is exactly the same that keeping the same political or religious or ideological, obviously not. Of course not. It's much more complicated, the other thing. Although it opens a window on the potency of social pressure. Here you have the same kind of experiments in another um, experimental um, manipulation, which is social. In this case, to diagnose the beauty of woman faces. Diagnose it by women, not by men, like in other experiments, because one uh, till here could have, could have thought, well, all those experiments were, were done with men. Those are done with, one, with women. So, uh, and this was done uh, in, in Amsterdam and Nijmegen, quite close from here. So, Basili Klusharev, who was the leader of those experiments, presented inside the machine in order to follow the works of the brain while, while the subjects were responding to those uh, um, experiments. He presented many faces, you have an, one example here, and he demanded uh, the subject to, uh, to rate the beauty of this face between one and seven, seven maximum, one, Minimal. And you can see here the opinion of one particular subject, six. And then, after that, after that, this implicates a decision on the part of the subject. Pushing a button inside, inside the machine. But after that, arrive at the opinion of the community, of the community of Dutch women. They had those opinions because they've, they've, they had previously investigated that, and they were, they were using a standard, uh, hundreds, but standard uh, faces. And the community, uh, the, you see that the rate of the community is eight. So you you are rating this face as a little bit ugly than the rest of your uh, um, colleagues in your country. So you're a little bit wrong. And they studied what happened when you had this conflict, that you are not with the opinion of the majority concerning the beauty of faces. And then when people uh, Mm, left the, the machine, half an hour later, they could rate again, and you can see that there was a little change. You have the, the summary of the results here. When the group of women, of Dutch women, uh, rate faces as uh, more beautiful, the subjects increase their rates afterwards. And when they uh, realize that the community of Dutch women uh, rate the faces as uh, uglier, they, rate, uh, they decrease their ratings. And this, in the brain, produce an intimate conflict in the place where all who study uh, automatic, quick, and intimate conflicts, not conscious, which is the anterior part of the cingulate uh, in this region, which is, uh, which, which is uh, I'm marking now. Uh, this goes up, and you have a, a, a small decrease of uh, being well in the region where you, you, you uh, feel satisfied. Okay. So, this situation of being in conflict with your group produces a signal, an automatic signal in your mind that uh, mm, 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 uh, activates 
uh, conflict and reduces satisfaction. Uh, they, uh, he studied exactly the same thing, not with the signal of uh, uh, fMRI, but, this, but with electrophysiological measures taken from even related potentials. And they got exactly the same result. And, and they did uh, still uh, final experiments in which they uh, applied uh, a stimulation from uh, out of the um, out of the uh, out of the head, transcranial magnetic stimulation directed to the region which uh, process the intimate conflict when you are not uh, going with uh, your group, and they were able experimentally to uh, reduce or increase uh, the responses of the subjects uh, doing that experimentally. So they modified the tendency to be obedient by uh, stimulating the particular places of the brain that process that. It, and this is tremendously powerful because this is not correlational, this is experimental. Okay. A similar experiment with the opinions about songs, but I'm going to skip that. Memory. This is memory. You go to the lab and saw a film, a movie, with five colleagues of you, and all of, all of you see uh, the same movie. Uh, three days later, day three, they uh, present you with questions about how do you remember the, uh, the movie. Lots of questions. And you have a perfect uh, retrieval and recovery of, uh, of the memory. And then, seven days later, uh, so one week after you saw the movie for the first time, uh, you go into the machine in order to follow how the brain proceeds that, how the opinion of other changes your memory, and uh, in the, the same kind of questions appear again, which are questions of different scenes of the, uh, of the, of the film. In this case, in here it says, in this scene, the, the police arrested the man. Or in this scene, uh, the police arrested the child. You have a, a fantastic memory that in your mind and in your memory, the police in that movie arrested the child. But your colleagues, all of them say, no, they arrested a man. OK? Results. 68%, 68%, despite having a perfect memory three days after be, having viewed the film, 68% go with the group. Seven days later, and 14 days later, two weeks later, this is when the group uh, produces an opinion, but they they measured that again 15 days later, without the group, and 41% maintained the wrong opinion, who had been fabricated by the rest of people. And this was processed, the persistent errors in memories fabricated by the others, this was fabricated in the places of the brain that fabricates memories, in order to make them enduring. So we have no lines, geometrical figures, faces, and memories about movies. And more, there are experiments on social influence in the internet. I am going to skip that, okay. Now, I have 
I had several experiments on parochialism, but as Professor De Dre will uh, explain many experiments on parochialism, I'm going to, exp to, to skip that. And let me, you give me two minutes more to the end? Okay, I'll skip all that. I'll skip all that. We can, we can come back in, during the debate. I'll skip all that. I'll skip that. Look, just to recover the uh, initiation of my talk. Remember that uh, I was saying that we have a strongly polarized front, uh, society across an ethno-cultural frontier. Here you have a summary of the electoral results of September 2015 that you have seen distributed about, about people from native origins and assimilated, like me, and people from the rest of Spain and uh, foreign countries. The secessionist parties uh, is uh, green and yellow, and the non-secessionist parties, violet, uh, brown, red, blue. So uh, the people who, uh, 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 as you measure, this is born out of Catalonia, fathers born of, out of Catalonia, grandfathers born out of Catalonia, uh, and here, Catalans born in Catalonia and fathers in Catalonia, grandfathers in Catalonia, you have here a division, a perfect division of origin against both, in relation to both. I'm going to skip that as well. This is a challenge for Professor De Dre because it's, this is the first experiment that demonstrates that parochialism can be corrected experimentally, as you saw previously, that social conformity also can be manipulated experimentally, but I'm going to skip that. So we live in Catalonia in this situation, in exactly this, uh, when the examples of congregation, gregariousness, obedience, conformity, and parochialism go from Towerist fandom to soccer fandom to nationalist fandom. And there are very curious results in, in addition to the ones I explained it previously. For instance, this is again the official survey agency of the regional uh, government of Catalonia. This is the opinion uh, expressed in trust from zero to 10, minimal maximum, of the Catalan citizenry in their institutions. The Catalans, the Catalans respect the most, the media, the media. Second, the Catalan police. Third, the United Nations. Fourth, the Catalan parliament. Fifth, the Catalan government. Sixth, the European Union. Uh, 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 seven, the Spanish police, uh, eight, justice, uh, uh, nine, Spanish army, trade unions, political parties, part but look, Spanish monarchy is at the end. Central government, penultimate, banks, the ultimate. The same question for the Spanish citizenry in the rest of Spain gives the media uh, in this place, in the middle, in the middle. And look, there is in Catalonia what, one thing which I call the Catalonia media bubble, an encapsulating umbrella, because in exactly this, those same service, those of the last service, this is October for, uh, uh, 2014, but uh, the, the, the last results of uh, October uh, 2015, uh, prefer TV channel to follow political and general news. So to be informed about, about the world. It leads TV3, which is the, uh, the, the channel uh, official of the regional government. And it leads tremendously. Uh, adding to that the audience of local TV channel, it gives 60%. And for 
for being informed about the world, the Catalans only follow uh, uh, Spanish TV channels, 33%, 33% of, uh, of the followers. Broadcasting stations, it's even more exaggerated. The, uh, and the combination of Catalonia Radio and RACU, this one is the official public station, this one is a private one. They have 62% of the followers, and the Spanish station also assume only 25% of the following. Newspapers, preferred newspapers for the Catalan citizens. La Vanguardia and El Periódico, both Barcelona newspaper with regional scope, daily edition in Spanish and Catalan language, but the Catalan dominant, they are uh, followed and bought by 57% of readers. If you add to those uh, newspapers completely processionist, did give, which is an, another 20%, 20 it gives 77% of Catalan readers. The proportion of followers of Spanish newspapers does not reach 10%. And the same for, for blogs and social media. So, so the opportunities to, to put pressure, to apply social uh, pushing, and to influence is tremendous, tremendous in a way that probably doesn't happen in a comparable uh, Western country. Look, this is a, is a, very, is a very curious uh, finding. It's a very curious finding. Some colleagues of mine uh, uh, in my university say it is my fault, because I explained it that two years ago. Uh, uh, the campaign reads, Put the secessionist flag in your balcony and keep it there till secession. This comes because uh, an Israeli uh, investigator, Ran Hassin, which is a wonderful uh, researcher, social psychologist, demonstrated that just while, while you are doing another thing, another routine, if a flag appears in your world of perception, that changes a little bit your opinion. In Israel, they demonstrate, they, they, he demonstrated that for Israelis and demonstrated that for Palestinians, then in Russia, then in, uh, uh, in Italy, and the last result, which I uh, know, was uh, in America, in the United States. Uh, he demonstrated that by putting people to answer, we have not enough time for I need 30 seconds. Okay. Eh? Half, half an hour ago, you need the same. <laughs> <laughs> that just by put, while, while people were answering those questionnaires, one, some of them had this small flag in the papers, others not. And others were responding to those pictures. And as you can see, one picture, they are the same pictures. But in one of them, there is a flag, and the other one, not. And they had to answer other things, no, not this. So this changed, just this changed the opinion of states in the United States in the last campaign, in the last presidential campaign, in states which were in favor of, uh, um, in favor of Obama. Just by putting that, uh, the, uh, the flag prime condition produced just one presentation, 10% uh, of increase of pro-Republican vote. So, I'm, I have finished. I have finished. I have finished. So, so this is the end. This is the end. Thank you. Uh,